Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today we have the very first German battle cruiser of the new German battle cruiser line in game to review for you guys today. Now, this is the tier 4 tech line German battle cruiser, the Motka, which you can receive by linking your Prime Gaming account to your World Warships account. Everyone can, can get this ship in their port right now completely for free. They've done this a couple of times with the new lines and normally the patch, the, not the patch before. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. The patch before the early access event, they'll let you get your hands on something like the tier 4, the tier 3, something low tier just to give you a little taste of what's coming up in the line. So I have no prior experience with this ship at all. I'm not a CC, so it's not like I've played this behind closed doors and I'm just break breaking it out for you guys right now. But we should start to get an idea of what this line is kind of about. Now, Tier 4 isn't very, let's say, diverse with the battleships. It's mostly point pointing in toward enemy ship and have at it. But we'll see if this ship manages to stick out down there. Now, what's very interesting is, first off, the turret layout of the ship. <laughs> this screams World War I um, battleship battlecruiser design. you got a single turret on the bow of the ship. You've got a wing turret here, wing turret here, and then two turrets centerline at the stern of the ship. What a design. Just I, I, I love these really weird early war designs uh well not early war but or like world war one era designs and will these turrets be able to i don't think they will i don't think these turrets are going to be able to well maybe to um fire across the deck it looks like it'll be pretty close actually i think they can this one looks like it might be able to um can turret two here do that oh yeah it looks like it's barely got enough room to clear that uh, you can kind of see how this part of the superstructure is curved to let the gun rotate. That's going to be close. I'm assuming these lifeboats are going to disappear um, from the deck when we get into battle with her. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at her stats and we'll compare her to some other tier 4 battleships as we go through it. I do have the Kaiser uh, right here to compare her to, which funnily enough has a pretty similar turret set up to her as well. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Oh, something that's really cool too is that they are going to replace the uh, the World War One era ships. They're going to have the proper uh, Imperial German naval ensign on them, and not the uh, World War II um, spicy Germany naval ensign on them. Um, not sure much of that I can say on YouTube. I had that run in with the algorithm, not the algorithm, with the uh, community guidelines some time ago. And hello, Icebreaker Bow. All right, let's look at her armor. Um, of course, no modules nor commander skills have been applied just yet. You do get a six-point commander with this ship with the deal on Prime. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at her. 80 millimeter, good old middle finger bow right there. Look at that. 80 millimeter. Um, plate right there 100 millimeter plate there 120 millimeter plate there good lord uh but then that is of course uh with a 19 millimeter plate um for the rest of the bow now the majority of the bow is covered by this icebreaker bow which um wow that's that's quite good especially at tier four um uh, look at the kaiser she has her 19 millimeter plate she has her plate there too but much more of this 19 millimeter bow is exposed, whereas on the the Moltke, it's um, you got this big old honking plate right there too. And I believe this trend continues up the rest of the line. I don't think they're in the, even in the tech tree yet. No, they are not. That trend does continue up the the rest of the line from what I've seen too. Okay, 200 millimeter upper belt, 270 millimeter mid belt, uh, 100 millimeter stern plate. There does not complete a wrap around the end. That would be very nice if this was a complete wrap around. Because it looks like you can have much more firepower shooting over your shoulder than you can from a, a bow on position. All right, so 19 millimeter fore deck, 35 millimeter mid deck with a 60 millimeter strip. I'm oh, sorry, 25 millimeter strip there in the middle. Uh, <laughs> tier four CVs, yeah. Um, and that continues. Yep, 25 millimeter there, 19 millimeter stern deck there, and not a lot of superstructure at all, which is some of the benefits of these sh these uh, World War One era ships. There's just so little superstructure there to shoot 
that a lot of HC shells simply don't have anything to hit, which is very nice, of course, when playing battleships. All right, let's take a look at her Citadel. Citadel that is barely, barely, barely below the waterline. I think if the camera was properly level with the water, we would see that it's probably right at the waterline. But got the good old German total, total back to come in there and save the day. And uh, look at these uh, <laughs> these uh, barbettes here. Almost sticking out the side here, but not sticking out the side just yet. All right. Servability, she has 37,600 hit points. Let's make sure I've got the upgraded hull on as well. I do not. Ha <laughs> ha, silly sea lord. All right, now she has 40,800 uh, hit points. All right, good. And the Kaiser, which is the mainline tier four, has 46,400. Okay, again, emphasizing that these are battle cruisers and not, of course, mainline battleships. That makes sense there. 16% torpedo damage reduction. Funny that the Kerr first only has four more percent torpedo damage reduction. It's fun. Find it, find it a little funny. Guns, you get five 283 millimeter guns with a 30 second reload time. Uh, five by two, so I'm sorry, 10 two, 283 millimeter guns with a 30 second reload time. That's quite good for how many guns you have. Uh, 45 second 180 time, maximum disposal of 173 meters, and 19% chance of starting a fire per HE shell. The AP does a maximum damage of 7,200. 7, HE does a maximum damage of 3,200. Both AP and HE shells are flying out the barrel at 855 meters a second. And she has a maximum range of 14.9 kilometers. Copying over to the Kaiser, who has a 26 second reload time on her, uh, on, on her 305 millimeter gun. So bigger guns, but better reload time. But worse dispersion. However, she does have better range at 16 kilometers. Ooh, so not the best range on the guns and doesn't seem like they're all that accurate. So interesting. Okay, secondaries. She has eight of the deck mounted 88 millimeter guns, which have a maximum range right now before, of course, anything gets thrown on them of 4.8 kilometers and a four second flat reload time. 4% chance of starting a fire and 15 millimeters of HE pen. Literally have a couple of <laughs> Tiger tanks sitting on the deck, just realized that. All right, um, then she has 12 of these 150 millimeter um, hull mounted guns. Oh God, again, what were these called? You guys keep telling me them and I keep forgetting what they're called. There's something with a, uh, with, with, with a P, but I can't remember them. Anyway, um, so you get 12 of these, which is quite nice. And these can of course pin 38 millimeters of armor, which is more than enough for what you need down at tier four. Uh, maximum range of again, 4.8 kilometers base. 10% chance of start, starting a fire in 8.6 second reload time. So, secondaries seem to be pretty good for uh, Tier 4. Once you put modules and commander skills on there, you're probably able to get them around to, I think, probably like 6, maybe even 8. Uh, we'll see. And these are supposedly quite accurate, too. I've seen the higher tier ships in-game um, on, like, my team and the enemy team, and the secondaries seem quite accurate. I wish you could deploy the uh, the torpedo net here to help with the... Uh, with the uh, torpedoes being thrown at you, but unfortunately, probably not. That'd be a cool, like, uh, consumable to use. All right, AA twenty-five. You got eight of these. Uh... <laughs> oh my god, they're literally like uh, MG eight. Is, is that the Vickers? They're literally just like um, water-cooled machine guns on like a tripod. Oh my god, that's. That's pretty funny. So you get eight of those, and then the 88 millimeter deck guns do dual purpose as AA. So it's a tier four ship. No, no surprise here. And a World War One ship at that too. A uh, 28.4 knots. The Kaiser goes 24 knots. So yeah, faster than the Kaiser. This is before the speed flag gets added on there too. 12.2 second rudder shift time, but a slightly larger turning radius makes sense. The ship is moving faster. 12.2 uh, second rudder shift time. Pretty maneuverable again before we put anything on there uh 10 kilometer concealment so you got four kilometers to work with a uh, base all right so let's i'm gonna go ahead and module and kit her out no no uh prizes for guessing what type of build i'm gonna go with here so i'll meet you guys back here in a moment all righty so module build it's a tier four <laughs> went with auxiliary armaments mod one 
and then damage con uh, mod one as well and then for oh I need to put a camo on here too now she doesn't have a premium camo just yet so I'm just gonna go ahead and slap the type 5 on there it looks pretty uh, pretty German to me all right so uh, commander build it's Luchin's full secondary build of course so preventive maintenance MLG turrets be it well long range secondary battery shells and manual secondary battery aiming adrenaline rush close quarters combat and emergency repair experts so full-on secondary build here so that now gives us a where is the a six kilometer range on tier four secondaries that's really really not bad at all um, and they have a reload time now of 3.4 seconds for the 88s and 7.3 for the 150s all right that's pretty good and now our concealments still 10.5 I don't know why I talked about that because I didn't put consumer expert on <laughs> Um anything else you need to check oh yeah speed what is our speed now speed is now 29.8 knots with the speed like almost 30 knots at tier 4 if you put swift and silent on there um, you will go 30 knots <laughs> oh my god that's such a dumb skill and AA with the eight did I put the A flag? No, I didn't put the A flag on here because it said it wasn't even worth putting it uh, putting it on the ship. So that's pretty funny right there. All right, so we're going to go ahead, hop into battle with the Moltke here, and I'll meet you guys there for a bit of a voiceover review. So I'll meet you guys right there. Hello, guys. Voiceover Mountbatten here. So the Moltke. This is an amazing Tier 4 ship. It's quite good. It's quite refreshing on what's normally going on at tier four as far as battleships go uh from tier three to tier four battleships have an eerily similar play style for most lines again like i said in port it's normally just point the pony ship at the enemy and eventually you'll just you'll kill them because battleship armor tank big guns you know unga bunga and you'll do fine and sure the motka can do that but this ship is so fast for tier 4 that 30 knot top speed is not expected at tier 4. It's quite refreshing to have a, a battleship down there or a battle cruiser down there with this much armor, with this caliber of guns, rocking and rolling at 30 knots. It's quite a good time. And what's really surprised me about the guns is that they're quite consistent. They're not the most accurate things ever, and you can see in the footage playing in the background right now, they're, they are actually pretty darn accurate for Tier 4, but not the most accurate. But they're pretty nice and consistent. There wasn't a lot of curveballs uh, thrown at me when I was playing this ship for this video, which was quite refreshing on a German ship. Now, is the whole line like that? Um, I don't think so. Of course, they are German. I'm sure quite a few of them will have pretty wonky dispersion. But from what we've seen here, they seem to be pretty consistent. And if you've got consistent dispersion, you can work with whatever you're given. If you know what manner your shells are going to most likely be dispersed in, you can definitely make adjustments and plan for that. That's one reason why the American battleships are so good. So the secondary is probably one of the bigger, of course, attractions of the ship. They are quite accurate. You can see when I start to fire on another ship with, I think it's uh, actually another Moltka at the beginning of this match, or Moltka, however you say it. They are quite accurate for right out the gate dispersion before the, uh, the skills kick in, before that 45 second timer winds up. And when that 45 second timer does wind up, you can see that they are scarily accurate even again at tier four and from what we've seen with the higher tier ones i've seen the the, the schlieffen in in game they are scarily accurate at that tier even though they are only 105s and they can't pin 32 the amount of shells you're throwing out you're going to be starting quite a few fires so yeah i, I won't be pinning them too much but i'm just going to burn down their ship anyway Maneuverability in terms of the rudder is also quite good here too. Of course, 12 second rudder shift time is very good on any type of battleship or battle cruiser, and that is again reflected here. So the big question is, what's the armor like? Because she does have a 19 millimeter nose plate and stern plate, but she has that nice wrap around icebreaker bow, and that is continued up the entirety of the line too. 
so we can you know get a pretty decent feeling for what the armor scheme is going to generally be like here not saying it's you know a hundred percent going to be like this at the tier 10 but for the armor profile it feels actually really nice with the maneuverability of the ship once you get a hang of the layout of the armor on the ship you can maneuver your ship fast enough to really mitigate the damage and it's a really 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 tough ship for close in again keep in mind too this is at tier four so the range is much closer here than at higher tier and it is generally the layout of the german battleship line of course just the, the bow armor is a bit th thinner where the uh, icebreaker isn't so it has the same drawbacks at long range you know it, it gets chunked at long range but at close range you you are very 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 tanky and with the maneuverability of the ship too you can angle your ship in pretty sharply to of course increase the effective thickness of your ship and bounce those shells but if you do find yourself broadside in you do have the turtle back armor and yeah you won't get citadel but you will eat big damage in this ship if you get caught broadside but again you won't get citadel but you know losing 15 20k in one style was pretty much as good as getting citadel just you know you can reprint a little bit of that more with your heal than if that was citadel damage you do have that going for you here and talking about the tankiness of the ship we of course have to talk about the uh, damage con and i unfortunately glanced over that in in port but it does have the soviet fast damage con which is very 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 useful in a pinch especially with the current meta that we're in with all this he being thrown around that fast cooldown time on the damage con is quite useful the only downside is that there's a limited number of charges of it and unlike um not not cap i was gonna say capros unlike uh, kustazov um lucian's doesn't get the hidden reserves talent so he can't get an additional um damage con for getting first blood like Kuz uh, Kuz kuznetsov can but I mean, Lucian is still, of course, a fantastic commander to have on this ship, as I do. And he does get the Resilient skill, which you can get kind of uh, another heal off if you spot three enemies. But that's not really going to be happening too much, of course, in, in a battleship. And you can't really, you know, depend on it. But it is quite the ship. It's actually one of the funnest Tier 4 ships I've played because of its speed, its maneuverability, the armor, the guns, it's quite nice. And the two guns in the middle, they can rotate to fire broadside over the deck of the ship. Uh, what's really funny is apparently that they forgot to remove one of the launches for, I believe, the number three turret. So, you know, you're kind of disintegrating the launch when you uh, fire your gun. So they, they'll they probably fix that in a... Uh, in, 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 um, in the next couple of patches before the this line comes out fully or they'll just leave it on there it's not like it's you know actually blocking the shell or anything like that but it's a really fun ship oh aa AA is of course it's a tier four ship world war one era battleship a ba battle cruiser it's it's not nothing it's pretty much nothing it's not really going to deter the enemy cv so yeah but again tier four battle cruiser World War One wasn't a lot of naval aviation going on. It's it is to be expected. However, of course, at tier four you can get double CV games, and having barely any AA, yeah, that's gonna suck. But the ship is quite maneuverable, like we've talked about already. So you can dance your way around the the aerial drop torpedoes and even make it a little bit more difficult for the enemy CV to drop on you with your maneuverability. And of course, too, this is a real steel ship. The ship really was constructed and launched in real life, so that is very, very, very cool to see this ship added in game, an actual historical ship. So what are my general first impressions for the line from the ship? Now, do keep in mind, it is, of course, just one ship. So you can't really judge the whole line by it, but it seems like the Tier 4 is incredibly strong. And the formula that they've got going on here with the armor layout, the maneuverability, and the speed is an incredibly fun one. Package that in there with the secondaries with the good accuracy and the good fire rate of the secondaries. And it seems like we've got a very, very fun tech line coming out from us pretty soon. And this was a really, really, really fun ship to review for me. Just the, the four or five matches I played here making this first impressions video. I had a hoot. It was some some of the funnest fun I've had at Tier 4. I know it's 
kind of a weird sentence to say, but again, the, the maneuverability of the ship, the secondaries, the main battery, and the armor layout, it's a really fun ship to play. And if you do have an Amazon Prime account, and you have a Twitch Prime account set up, which if you have an Amazon Prime account, you have a Twitch Prime account, um, go ahead and get this ship. You just have to sign up uh, and link your your Twitch Prime with your World of Ships account, and you can get the ship in your port right now for you to get and you to mess around with. And I'm sure a vast majority of the audience that watches this channel will very much enjoy this ship. It's a really fun ship to play. They have some really fun combos going on with this ship. And if the rest of the line is like this, we're in for a fantastic battle cruiser line. And what a first battle uh, battle cruiser line to get in the game if the rest of the line is like this. Now, of course, that's a pretty big if. It is just a single ship, hard to judge a whole line by one ship, but hopefully this is what the rest of them are like, and if they are, we are going to have a fantastic tech line, boys. So I'm very excited for German battle cruisers, and this has just made me that much more excited. Oh, also to note too, the uh, the wonky layout of the turrets, they actually allow you to fire either tur either uh, three turrets forward or five tur or four turrets to the rear, kind of like what you can do with the uh with a nassau but both of those turrets can rotate almost 360 degrees to shoot either behind them or uh, in front of them they but you know they of course can't fully 360 because of the uh, superstructure in the middle with the uh, second stack there but they almost can so they have a really good firing angles i almost forgot to mention that um, when i was talking about the ship but yeah it's a great ship i encourage you guys to link your account to twitch and to get your hand on the ship and get going along with it in battle there's tons of them in tier 4 so tier 4 is kind of a mess right now but it, it, it's a beautiful german battle cruiser mess down at tier 4 anyway guys if you do manage to get your hands on this ship let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below and what it does for the upcoming battle sh uh, german battle cruiser line for you i keep wanting to say battleship it's so weird saying battle cruiser we're talking about this game and talking about a full tech line but we're finally there so we shall see how this pans out but i'm enjoying it right now anyway guys i will be live streaming here tonight on the channel and on twitch we'll be breaking out the Moltka here i'm sure quite a lot tonight um, for you guys here on stream from uh, 5 p.m u.s central time to 8 p.m u.s central time so please come out and check out the stream tonight hope you guys enjoyed hope you guys are having a wonderful friday and have a wonderful weekend if you did enjoy make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel one way to 30,000 subs and i cannot thank you guys enough for that Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.